crisis in cosmology that has been developing over the past several years is because increasingly the Big Bang's predictions are being contradicted by better and better data. The situation in the past few years has become so extreme that in the published literature, the predictions are in contradiction with at least 16 separate data sets and are only in agreement with one, the deuterium uh, abundance. This situation has been made much worse over the summer as the spectacular images from the James Webb Space Telescope have become uh, available. Among other problems, the Space Telescope has shown images that were surprisingly small, surprising to Big Bang cosmologists, and if taken in the context of the Big Bang hypothesis, imply impossibly small galaxies with the mass and luminosity of our own Milky Way, but with one hundredth the radius, impossible to develop into present day large galaxies. In contrast, the alternative, which is an evolving but not expanding universe, has made a sequence of correct predictions, including our prediction of Ricardo Scarpa and mine, of the exact size of the JWST images before the images were available. The problem of the James Webb Space Telescope is a problem I know very well. <laughs> and when we are about to think, uh, speaking, I would argue that most of those results are not robust and they are strongly model dependent. So there is at the moment uh, not such a thing as a galaxies older than the universe. In fact, I think they published their paper far too quickly, and I'm not the only one thinking that. <coughs> and I exactly calculate the masses of galaxies, which is not a data, is not an observable. It comes out of a detailed modeling procedure. So one thing is data that you see. In astrophysics, most of data actually are filtered by other models. So we need a second layer procedure. Science is about predicting things before they happen. Since we're talking about an observational science in which we're observing things we can't experiment with, we're talking about predicting observations before they occur. Now, what's been happening with the Big Bang Theory is you have an observation that contradicts a prediction quantitatively. And this was true, for example, with the discovery of the microwave background. It was predicted to be 50 degrees K, it turned out to be 3 degrees K. Well, that's an error of about a factor of 10,000 in energy. It's a little off. But they adjusted the theory. Inflation was another adjustment because the original theory of this cosmic microwave background, they figured out, would not give an even sky, but one that was completely uh, hopscotch. So they had to add inflation to tweak the theory. Well, the difference between making predictions beforehand and making adjustments afterhand is sort of like this. If you're getting on an airplane to go across the Atlantic and the airline says, well, we've had 16 crashes out of the last 17 flights, but after each crash we were unable to totally understand why the plane crashed. But you say the next plane crashed? And they said, yes. Well, I don't think any of us would get on that airline. That's why we have to abandon the Big Bang. I think everyone is keen to abandon a theory if there is a better alternative. Nobody is married to the Big Bang theory, and also there are different levels that get mixed together here, not necessarily inflation, dark matter, and dark energy. Okay. If there is a better theory that can explain the web structure of the universe on the larger scale, the distribution of galaxies, and I insist the fact that the spectra get younger, approximating a Big Bang, I think we will all be fine with that. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.